is talking about quadrupole moments of rotating compact stars. So I'm going to talk about work that we have done with uh, John Miller, who is our chair, and with uh, the next two people of power. And uh, so the, the theoretical calculations that we have done are motivated by the possibility of testing astrophysical phenomena uh, around rotating compact stars. This means that uh, we simply calculate the uh, parameter par properties of the new rotating neutron stars. We look which of these properties are parameters of the external space time. And we look how these uh, objects affect the external space time and how this uh, affects the astrophysical phenomena that are happening in the space time. And uh, we hope that this will help us to put uh, some constraints on the models of uh, astrophysical phenomena and that we could uh, uh, narrow the possible models for explanation of these phenomena. Of, of course, if we will know the exact model for observed phenomena, we can go backwards and we can end at the mo model of a rotating neutron star and we can that's the equation of the state of the neutron star matter. Here I focus on differences between neutron stars and strange stars. If the rotation is taken into account, and uh, also I will uh, say a couple of words about applicability of uh, approximation that we have used. So we have used the so-called slow rotation approximation that has been developed by Hartle and Hartle and Don in 1968. Also, there has been some uh, important work done by Sidrakian and Chuparan in 1968 and by Chandrasekhar and Miller and Miller himself in the 70s. So slow rotation approximation is valid for if the angular velocity of the star squared is much less than the Keplerian uh, velocity of the particle, which is sitting at the equator of the star at the, at the surface. So if we take uh, neutron star with uh, canonical mass 1.4 solar masses and radius 12 kilometers. Then the maximum rotational frequency we got from this uh, simple Newtonian formula is 1250 hertz. So for this neutron star model, this uh, could work if the rotational frequency of the star over 1250 hertz squared is much less than one. Currently, the fastest observed pulsar is the pulsar rotating with 716 hertz. And uh, we now know about certain pulsars that has a rotational frequency higher than 500 hertz. And this is among uh, more than 2,000 of observed pulsars. Slow rotation uh, approximation is uh, perturbation of spherically symmetric star. And only terms up to second order in angular velocity are taken into account. And also, it is important to mention that we assume a rigid rotation of the neutron star. So, as I said, uh, I'm not talking just about neutron stars, but about compact stars, which means neutron stars and strange stars. So, for neutron stars, we decide uh, we choose a set of equation of state and. Uh, it is important to mention that uh, not all of these equations of state uh, meet requirements uh, of uh, astrophys of uh, observed uh, observational tests, which are the high mass, highest observed masses, which are more than two solar masses, or the Steiner, Latimer, and Brown tests, which uh, put some constraints on mass radius relations of the neutron stars or that has been uh, resolved by Glenn et al, who have uh, had a set of various uh, observational tests, and also Potsagoski et al, who has uh, made tests for mass baryon mass uh, uh, relation for neutron stars uh, based on the observations of uh, double, pol double pulsar. For strange stars, we use the simplest MIT back model with uh, two values of back constant. One is the standard one, 10 to the 14 grams per centimeter cubic, and the second one is uh, twice uh, higher. If we look at the equation of state for a state star matter, we can see that it's a very simple for linear formula where the relating pressure and energy density, and we can see that uh, the back constant gives the 
surface energy density. So surface energy density is four times the Bech constant because at the surface of the neutron star, the pressure goes to zero. So if one is uh, interested in uh, rotating neutron stars and calculate this, this using uh, Hartle-Torn approximation, one starts with the spherically symmetric star. So here is a line element uh, in short chart metric. And this is the differential equation, which is the equation of hydrostatic equilibrium. And uh, this is solved numerically for uh, given central parameters, like central pressure or energy density. And one needs equation of states that relate pressure and energy density at given radius. So after the solution of uh, differential equation, of uh, POV equation, we got the parameters of the neutron stars. And this is the mass radius plot for uh, this set of equations of state. And uh, we can see that uh, these two are the strange star equations of state, and these others are uh, neutron star equations of state. This is the value of 2.0 solar masses, and we can see that uh, some of the equations of state for neutron star clearly do not meet these requirements. But we have uh, included them in our set because we would like to show that if we look at proper parameters of the neutron stars, we can, uh, this uh, relatively wide uh, range of curves can narrow down to almost single curve. In my presentation, I'm going to use uh, this dimensionless property, which is radius of the star divided by its short shot radius. And uh, we can see that for 1.4 solar mass, this uh, quantity is from 2.5 to 3.5. This means that the radius of the neutron star is uh, for 1.4 solar masses is around the marginally stable orbit, which corresponds to 3. Also, we can, uh, the number 1 corresponds to the short shell black hole, and the 1.5 corresponds to unstable photon orbit, circular orbit, as we can see that the uh, none of current equation of states is able to get below this, uh, has a surface below photon orbit. For uh, two solar masses, if the equation of state is enabled to such model, we can see that uh, this uh, rate, this value is around two, which means that the radius is, uh, of the star is around four times the mass. So key quantities of uh, rotating neutron stars in the Hartleton approximation were only <coughs> times up to second order in uh, star angular velocity are taken into account are the gravitational mass of the rotating of object, which includes also the kinetic energy corresponding to the rotation, the angular <coughs> momentum of the star, and its quadrupole moment. These three quantities are de defined from the behavior of the gravitational potential at the infinity. And these three quantities is, are all quantities that are parameters of the external space-time of the rotating neutron star. If we assume that the external space-time is uh, also only, only up to second order in angular velocity. So this is like element in Hartle-Torn metric. <coughs> we can see uh, that there are these types that comes from the expansion of the spherically symmetric line element around uh, and we can uh, and there is this additional term which corresponds to dragging of auto inertial frames all of these quantities are of second order in angular velocity of the star while this omega is the only one which is of first order in uh, uh, angular velocity of the star So as I said, the physical properties of the star that fully, fully describe the rotational, rotating neutron star are the gravitational mass of the star, its angular momentum, and its quadrupole moment. Uh, it's uh, useful to define dimensionless quantities, which are dimensionless angular momentum, which is angular momentum over m squared, and dimensionless quadrupole moment, which is quadrupole moment over m cubed. Also, it is useful to define some uh, parameters, which are 
dimension less and also frequency independent, which is I over an R squared and uh, QM over J squared. This is simple moment of inertia factor and this is uh, this we call gap factor. And we will express these dimensionless quantities in terms of radius over, its, over the short shot radius of the star. <coughs> so this is the relation of moment of inertia factor versus the compactness. And we can see that uh, for neutron stars, we got uh, all of the lines that are close to this analytical expression that has been found by Vega and Hensel. And we can see that uh, for strange stars, uh, the models are at completely different position and there is a big gap between these two. Also, we can see that for strange stars, as the star is uh, uh, getting less and less compact, the value for uh, moment of inertia factor is uh, getting close to 0.4, which corresponds to the uh, homogeneous sphere, which is known from classical mechanics. This is caused uh, by the fact that for uh, low mass strain stars, the profile of energy density is very close to the uniform one. <coughs> so we have found that uh, if we look at this uh, care factor and we plot it against uh, compactness or radius or short shift radius, uh, we can see again that uh, we have, uh, for neutron stars, we have uh, all the lines close one to another and the strange stars are sitting at a different position. These are, in fact, two lines, which are uh, one on top of the other. And uh, this is for the strange stars, for the neutron stars. Also, we can see that for, thank you, for neutron stars, we can see that uh, as the radius is coming close to short shot radius, the value for care factor is coming close to one, which corresponds to the care metric. To be accurate, it doesn't correspond directly to the metric, but it corresponds to the care metric if the care metric will be expanded up to second uh, order in dimensionless angular moment. So what are these calculations? Uh, good for we can see that uh, if we start from mass, radius, and rotational frequency, we can get to parameters of the external space-time. And we can investigate the astrophysical phenomena around the rotating uh, compact stars, <coughs> which is uh, possible due to the universal relations. And also, if we will know uh, the explanation for this phenomena, we can uh, use these observations to test the equations of state. So we have calculated uh, this in the Hartleton approximation, and uh, we will compare these results with the result that has been calculated uh, using uh, Loren, which uh, is uh, exact for uh, any angular velocity. So for the comparison, we will use same equation for state, exactly same table, same central pressure, as, and same, same rotational frequency, and we will compare uh, what we got. So we can see the results here, which are calculated for the star rotating at 300 hertz. And we can see that the difference between, uh, in angular momentum between Lorraine and Hartleton is less than 1%. In the quadrupole moment, we can see that the difference is much bigger, and it depends on uh, the mass of the star, and it's much bigger when the, when the star is uh, more massive. But this difference is mainly dominated by different definitions in quadrupole moment. So this is not something which is against the Hamilton approximation. This originates in the different definitions. And if we look at the innermost stable circular orbit around uh, 1.2 solar mass star, the line corresponds to the ISCO frequency calculated using Hamilton and the points corresponds to those calculated using Loren. You can see that uh, up to 500 hertz, these are very close one to another. Then there is this uh, big gap, which uh, has uh, two co causes. One is because the difference of between uh, the Keplerian frequency and given orbit. And also there is another effect, which comes because uh, for 1.2, at these frequencies, we have the minimum and effective potential below 
the surface of the star. So in fact, this definition of the ISCO corresponds to the surface in this ca in cases from in some cases here. And this is the same for a star with 1.8 solar masses. And up to 1,000 hertz, we can see that uh, there is uh, almost no visible difference. So these are my conclusions and references. So thank you very much.